Welcome to another Liberty Basic Essentials. Today I want to show you something cool about the way that Liberty Basic can deal with large numbers. So let's start it up. And I'll click on the new file button. Okay, so most programming languages uh, have no trouble at all dealing with integer numbers of a certain size. Um, often approximately uh, somewhere from negative 2 billion to positive 2 billion in that range um, in a 32-bit implementation. Older languages that are 16 or 8-bit have much smaller ranges than that. But Liberty Basic has the ability to deal with very, very large numbers. So, for example, I'll just print out some value that's close to the range that other programming languages can deal with. So, you know, 2 billion... Um, 100 million, 200,000, 300. Okay. No problem. Okay, so then let's just say that uh, I want to show you that Liberty Basic can deal with much larger numbers than that. Then what I could do is I could multiply this number by another large number, and that will give us a lot more digits. So let me say, um, let's multiply this by... 10,000. Okay, so that's much bigger. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 digits long. Most programming languages can't deal with 14 digit long integer values, but that doesn't even begin to come close to what Liberty Basic can do with large, large integers. So for example, Let's just completely blow the doors off, okay? So let me just say, I'm going to print um, okay, that's a 10-digit number, okay? We're going to say times another 10-digit number and let's just do it again, okay, by another 10-digit number. All right, you know that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28 digits long. That's a gigantic number. Absolutely enormous. Now, what you've got to remember about this is that when Liberty Basic does a math on a very, very large integer like that, that would cause it to become a floating point value, then it can't keep up with that number of digits of precision. So it has to convert it into a floating point number. So for example, let's just take this and assign it to a variable. Okay, large int. Let's just print that out. So let's say that float equals large int divided by 5. Make it 5.1. Okay, we're going to make a whole new value. It's, it's a little smaller. It's still a lot of digits. And um, it's not going to be an integer anymore. So Liberty Basic will have to convert this into a float. So if I say print float and run that, you'll see that it turns into a floating point number. And this uses double precision floating point numbers. Uh, it's a standard internal format called the IEEE floating point format. Uh, so what we have is 2.9516492400. Times 10 to the 27th power. And what that means is that the decimal point it is actually 27 places over to the right. And even though we're only seeing, um, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 digits here. Is that 10? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 digits. Uh, internally, it's giving us about 16 digits. 
once you once your floating point value like that, you really can't um, you can't get those precision those digits of precision back. But let's just see what happens if we convert it into an integer. What happens? So if I say print the integer value of float, okay, it gives me all that. Right now, you got to re realize that this is not uh, absolutely precise anymore because it was converted into a float and then it was converted back into an integer. And so only the first 16 digits of this can really be relied on as being accurate. Um, so, you know, um, 16 digits, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So only that is really considered accurate. Everything after that is just an estimation which is really um, not useful. It's not accurate. You really can't rely on it. But this is the way that floating point numbers operate anyway. Okay, so that's our lesson for today. I uh, hope you found it interesting, and I'll see you next time.